Hello, good evening and welcome to this edition of the program. Thank you very much for your time. It's such a pleasure to have you. Controversial is the word we have received from across many of our social v uh, media viewers about the poster that we put up tonight in respect of the first part of the program. We put up a poster and uh, it's, a, it's a poster that's sort of saying that J.J. Rollins responds to Ahoy, but we made an artistic impression, put a gun in J.J.'s hand and the gun is pointing to Ahoy. And in our first uh, statement, we said J.J. fires back. Controversial is what we have been told it is. Some people uh, utterly don't like it. Uh, some people even find it demeaning of their personalities in there. And we tell them to take heart and, and be okay. This is an artwork. It's not a big deal. And um, our, our purpose for tonight is to do a scholarly analysis. Yes, we always do that. It's a scholarly analysis. We have read Kwame Nahoy's book and we have been working on it, as you know. And um, we have seen JJ's response. So tonight, the first part of the program, we'll get that done very quickly because we have an exclusive interview for you of a man that you'll be meeting very soon. Upon that one also, we have been told that there have been some controversy about uh, why that interview should occur. But I'm sure by the end of the interview, many people, as always happens, will come down and know that there was nothing uh, to hide or there was nothing uh, surreptitiously placed as any agenda against any presidential candidate. We don't do that here, do we? We just deal with the facts. Okay, so fact is that Kwame Nauhoe put up a book. So we're going to go through uh, the parts of the book that JJ is responding to. There are some parts of the book that JJ talks about Kwame Nahoy stating, for instance, about the 2008 uh, elections, and we don't find it in the book. Uh, so we're going to say that back to JJ's people, that uh, some of the statements written that Kwame Nahoy stated, for instance, that Fly Left Andrew Rollins did not support the 2008 campaign. That's not sort of bear out in the book. These days they call it fact-checking. Um, we have looked at it. Kwame Nahoy does not actually state that. So that's just one matter, but we'll get to other matters. And then there's uh, another small matter. In, in his response, Fly Lieutenant Rollins talks about the fact that in, in talking about his credentials uh, towards constitutionalism, he admits that he may not have been a democratic, uh, he may not have been a fan of uh, multi-party democracy, but he allowed it. And he makes a fundamental statement which has been challenged in an earlier book. He says that he handed over power to J.A. Kofo tonight for the first time. We are going to reveal the accounts in this uh, book. It's not a new book, it's an old book. The Ghanaian ODC is written by Dr. Bafo Ajimandia. Dr. Bafo tells a chilling, dramatic story about how military, senior military officers working as it were upon the desires, for want of a better expression, upon the desires of J.J. Rawlings to topple the second round voting of the 2000. Uh, elections. Uh, he, he names names, so we're going to read it for you. We have done some work on, uh, on the history of military interventions in Ghana. It's a documentary that we've been working on for about two and a half years. It's going to come out very soon. And in that documentary, uh, Dr. Bafo Ajimandria speaks to us about that incident. And uh, the name that is mentioned who toppled that whole exercise was incidentally the chief of defense staff, Major General Akafia. We will read that account to you. It's in Bafo Ajimandria's book. And we are reading that because JJ has written that so that JJ's people will see that and perhaps they can give a very much clearer response because Bafo's story is quite chilling and it's very dramatic. So that's, that's going to happen now. Uh, well, don't worry about, about all of that. So uh, for those of you who are worried about the poster, don't, don't worry. Don't worry about the poster. It's just, uh, just an artwork. We're going to do a scholarly work, scholarly presentation of the story. And then later we're going to speak to this man. His name is Atubiga and... Um, People have wondered why we are talking to him, but he, he, is, he has, an, he has an, an interesting analysis of, of telling how he believes that John Dramani Mahama will win the election of December. He's a former presidential aspirant of the National Democratic Congress, and uh, he is a, a keen NDC activist. For those of you who may not know who he is, he was part of uh, the election petition situation where they were held before the Supreme Court, and the, the court was concerned about statements they had made on, on public radio against the image of the court and uh, contempt was, um, was beckoning at them. But Atubiga is better known for his expressions in this video that went viral. Here it is. People that have occupied a higher position will tell the fear about us. Mm. If you ask Nanado, he will tell the fear about us. If you ask President Kufo, he will tell the fear about us. If you ask his Excellency John Draman, he will say fear about us. If you ask Kandapa today, he will tell you fear about us. If you ask Atubika, he will tell you fear about us. If you ask Bill Clinton, Obekache says fear about us. If you ask, if you are able to wake 
uh, uh, our late member of parliament who died, what's his name? Uh, 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 the one who was uh, uh, assassinated in his house. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 JB. JB, he will tell you fear about us. And I can tell you that Botos can let you succeed, Botos can let you fall. And Botos can bring a whole party down. This election is war. When I mean war, war professionally. So that's Stephen Atubiga. He's our guest, our main guest for tonight. And uh, we're going to talk a bit about some of the things that he says over there. But generally, we're talking about politics uh, with three months to go to the election. He believes that John Dramani Mahama will be elected president in December. Uh, but uh, we'll talk to him about other things. Okay, so let's go straight to the, uh, the big issues that we have today. So this is Kwame Nahoe. I still have some copies. I, I, I think that if I'm not mistaken, Good Evening Ghana is the program that has bought the most copies of Ahoy's book. Because what, the first time, how many did we buy? Yeah, we bought six the first time and then we bought another six. That's 12. Has, has anyone else bought 12? Okay. <laughs> if you bought 12, we'll go and buy 13. <laughs> Forgive me. Okay. Serious matters. Uh, page 177 of uh, Kwame Nahoy's book. The last paragraph, he says, and I quote, he says, but perhaps the most bizarre of all of Rawlings' intrigues against Professor Mills was when he asked my senior brother, Atua Hoy, of all people, to contest against Professor Mills. Jerry Rawlings invited Atua Hoy to his rich residence and tried to prevail on him to contest the presidential primaries against Professor Mills. Atu says he was outstanding because Jerry knew his relationship with Professor Mills, and also knew the role that he Atto, had played in 1996 in convincing Professor Mills to agree to be he Rawlings' running mate. According to Atto Ahoy, the meeting lasted for about two hours, and when Rawlings realized that he was not making any headway with him, they bade each other goodbye. Rawlings, however, requested Atto to ask his brother, Kwisi Ahoy, and I, Kwamina, to see him the next day, but ask him not to inform us about the likely subject matter of the meeting. Atu duly informed us about Rawlings' invitation, but also, of course, informed us about the likely subject matter of the meeting. So, in this page 177, Professor Kwame Nahoy says, and the Rawlings people believe that this is part of the, um, if you like, the spin to create that, uh, the, to create the impression that he, JJ, had a bad relationship with Professor Mills, etc., etc. So they say that Rawlings asked them, Atu Ahoy, to uh, run against Professor Mills indicating that Rawlings didn't like Mills, and, and he says that this is the beginning of the bad blood between Rawlings and the Mills people. Now, let's see Rawlings' reaction to this. In, in his 11-page documents, we are not going to show all the 11 pages. We have picked some aspects that we are dealing with. Here's what Fly Lieutenant Rawlings says, and he titles it Mills' private call to Rawlings. He says, after his landslide victory in the 2006 NDC primaries, candidate Mills traveled to South Africa for medical treatment. While in South Africa, comma, Mills put a call through to President Rawlings and indicated his desire to forego the candidature for the presidential election owing to his medical state. Following this conversation, uh, the script will go on. Following this conversation, President Rawlings held a meeting with some leading members of the party to express concern about the state of candidate Mills' health and urged them to identify recognizable party members who could step in. President Rawlings is on record as having suggested that some known personalities in the party should, should position themselves to demonstrate that the NDC had enough presidential material. Now, this is J.J. Rawlings' reaction. And I like the last paragraph. Keep it there. The last paragraph says, President Rawlings is on record. They are suggesting to us that they have evidence of this. President Rawlings is on record as having suggested that some known personalities in the party should position themselves to demonstrate that the NDC had enough presidential material. So that's Rawlings' response um, to this one. That's Rawlings' response to um, the fact that uh, Kwame Nass says he asked his brother, Professor Mills, to contest him. Um, you, can, you can deal with it how you want it, but we're just showing you the different aspects of, uh, of, of the document. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. I was just indicating that we should go on. Okay, so, then, so that's, that's one. The next one is uh, Rawlings' vision and uh, <clears throat> his legacy. The, the next one is Rawlings' vision and his legacy. And uh, we will talk about the Kwame Nahoy in the studio first before we go to that one. 
So Rawlinson's vision and his legacy is on page 231 of Kwame Nahoy's book. Kwame Nahoy talks about page 231 of, um, of the book. So I get to page 231. It's entitled Rawlinson's uh, vision and his legacy. Kwame Nahoy writes, and this, this is one of the, the parts that actually caught my attention when I was reading it. In the second paragraph of page 231, he says, philosophically and ideologically, he does not appear very deep, referring to J.J. Rawlings. Um, he is no Kwame Nkrumah, but, on his own, on his own way, but in his own way, he has a dominating personality, mesmerizing and nearly hypnotizing his first time listeners and audiences. So, okay, says philosophically and ideologically, JJ does not appear very deep, full stop. He is in no Kwame Nkrumah, comma, but in his own way, he has a dominating personality, mesmerizing and nearly hypnotizing in the first time, uh, to first time listeners and audiences. This is the image Rollins established as the first encounter with him. This has created a bit of controversy, and we, we have been on record of comparing Kwame Nahoy here and Kwame Nahoy in D.F. Annan's book, uh, presenting it differently, etc., etc. We have talked about Kevin Shillington, who also wrote about Rawlings, who also presents it differently and indicates that Rawlings has philosophy. This particular part appears to have annoyed J.J. Rawlings a little bit, because if you look at his response, his response, you can tell the body language is that of a bit of uh, perplexed anger. Here is J.J. Rawlings' response in his statement. His perspective, J.J. Rawlings, and remember that this statement is signed by the head of Rawlings' PR team, Mr. Kwabana Ando, and so he's referring to Rawlings' a second person sense. He says, his perspective began to take a more serious city and water. The populace will be living an unhappy and distressing substandard existence, while urban dwellers remained out of touch with the reality of, on the countryside, with the reality on the other side of the country. That's, that's Rollins talking. There, there, there's another page for this one. Uh, it goes on to say that years later, President Rollins' priority, naturally, was the provision of portable water for the wider populace and the distribution of electricity to the entire country, a vision he can proudly state he largely saw to fruition. So JJ is challenging uh, Kwame Nahoy that he did not have a, a philosophy and he did not have uh, psychology, a philosophy and, uh, and, and a political psychology. He says his political psychology was designed as a result of going around the country and seeing the deprivation. So basically, JJ's philosophy is about equitable distribution of the national resources. That, uh, that straddles both so uh, socialism and capitalism. We have seen that happen. They call it capitalism with the heart where capitalists are doing this and that. So that in terms of philosophy, J.J. is presenting himself almost as a centrist, that in terms of priority, he wants people to have the basic needs of life. And that's both socialists do that and, and capitalists also do that. So J.J. is challenging the philosophy bit over there. The next one that we'll go to is um, uh, Rawlings, uh, founder of the Fourth Republic. And Kwame Nahoy discusses that in page 257, I believe, of his book. Uh, and it's about the 1993 transition. So if, if you permit me, we'll look at page 257 of Kwame Nahoy's book. It's in the second part of the page, and he says that it was not easy convincing J.J. Rawlings to return the country to civilian constitutional rule. He seemed bent on continuing, Kwame Nahoy says, the revolution. He says Rawlings seemed bent on continuing the revolution. While some of us, his advisors, were convinced that in that period of the late 1980s and early 1990s, both the internal and the international situation argued uh, for a return to constitutional rule. Internally, the agitation for constitutional rule had reached a crescendo, and a coalition of middle classes and professional groups were agitating for the return to constitutional rule. The pressure on the PNDC was huge and intense. Internationally, the, United, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic is talking about the collapse of the Cold War. So Kwame Nahoy makes an emphatic statement that it was not easy convincing J.J. Rawlings to return to constitutional rule. J.J. Rawlings has a response again on this one. Let's see how J.J. responds. And this is on page 257 of Kwame Nahoy's book. Okay, so J.J. over there uh, uh, brings a response as follows. And it's entitled uh, Rawlings, founder of the Fourth Republic. President Rawlings, in 1992, the, the, the write-up says, established the Fourth Republic of Ghana, the longest running in the history of this nation, 
which still endures. Following his constitutionally mandated two-term serving as the president of Ghana, he handed over the flag bearership of the NDC to Professor Mills. That's interesting. Rowling says he handed over the flag bearership to Professor Mills. Yes, we know that he did that, uh, pursuant to the Swedru Declaration. He did that. He handed over the flag bearership of the NDC to Professor Mills and the leadership of the nation to President Kufuor in 2001. Okay, so that's JJ's um, response to that, that he's disagreeing that he doesn't, uh, it was difficult to convince him and that he's not a constitutional leader and all of that. He disagrees with that. So we will come back to this one in a bit, but let's now move on to uh, another pet subject in, in JJ's documents. A, a bit of time is spent on that one, talking about JJ's wife, the famous Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings. And uh, that account is on page 149. Uh, of the last paragraph of um, of uh, Nana of Kwame Nahoy's account. Let's see page one four nine. We're going to page one four nine. It's coming up right here. Uh, page one four nine. Note down the pages and you can check them very quickly. Uh, one forty nine. Why am I at one seventy four? And okay, one forty nine is what I'm looking for. Uh, yes, page one forty nine. And it is the uh, last paragraph. It says, at, then at Ho, uh, referring to the NDC Congress, the issue of Mills instead, Mills instead of Rollins T-shirt came up. Totobi Kwachi and I, who were staying in the same chalet at the Ho residency with the Rawlinses, had been personally accosted by Mrs. Rawlins in the morning of the Congress and we had quickly had to go and change our Mills T-shirt for Rawlings T-shirt. I was sure the T-shirt issued would po the T-shirt issue will poison the atmosphere even further. This is very serious allegation. This is a very very serious allegation. Kwame Nahoy alleges now this is about Mrs. Rawlings, not even about JJ. Kwame Nahoy alleges that in the 2000 Congress in Ho. In the 2000 election, where JJ was not going to be on the ballot, Mills was on the ballot. This was the whole Congress that I showed to you recently, viewers, when uh, I had the opportunity to interview JJ Rollins for the first time, um, the permission given to me by my boss at Joy FM. I, I showed you those photographs. This is the same Congress Kwame Nahoy refers to. It was done at whole in the year 2000. So that's 20 years ago. Now, um, he says, and this is the first time we're all hearing that, that they were staying, he and Totobi Kwachi were staying in the same chalet with Rollins and, uh, and his wife. He calls it the Rawlinses. I don't know whether some of the kids were in there. But Rawlins and his wife for sure. And when they, sh they showed up in the morning in Mill's T-shirt, they were told by Mrs. Rawlins to, to go and change the T-shirt and wear Rawlins T-shirt. This is what Kwame Nahoy is saying. Page 149, the last paragraph. Let's hear it again. It says, then at home, the issue of the Mill's instead of Rawlins T-shirt came up. Totobi Kwachi and I, who were staying in the same chalet at the whole residence with the Rawlinses, had been personally accosted by Mrs. Rawlins in the morning of the Congress, and we had quickly had to go and change our Mills T-shirts for Rawlins T-shirts. I was sure that the T-shirt issue would poison the atmosphere even further. It says at the Congress, when it was President Rawlins' turn to speak, he said, among other things, when I retire in 2001, I'm not going anywhere. I will stay right here with you in Ghana. The delegates and the supporters exploded in excitement.